Hi, I'm Michelle Ames with WP Coffee Talk, and I'm here today talking to Christina Workman. Christina, Hi. welcome. Thank you. It's good thank to you so here. much for, thank you. It's so good to have you on the Coffee Talk today. Um, so tell us a little bit who you are, what you do. So my name is Christina Workman. I am a front-end developer with WordPress. I have my own company, Amethyst Answers. And I hate, well, I don't hate graphic designing. I shouldn't say that, but I am not by any means a graphic designer. So whenever possible, I partner up with a friend of mine, Jamie Wedholm, who is a fantastic graphic designer so that we make even better websites. That's great. I always say that you should always rely on people who do things better than you so that you yes. can be the person who does something better than somebody else and they can rely on you. Well, I agree. Yeah. I'm sorry, I cut you off. What else were you going to oh, say? I was just going to say, I also, I really, um, I really love being part of the WordPress community, which of course this is all about. And so I've been hosting our meetups locally for a few years now. I've been an organizer of our WordCamps and I'm an organizer of WordCamp US this year. And I- Me too, and uh, that's how I know you. Yes. <laughs> and I brought Kids Camp. Well, we'll talk about Kids Camp later, but Kids Camp as well. So yeah. And so when you talk about your, um, an organizer of your local meetup and local WordCamp, where is that? Oh, in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Yeah. Aren't you supposed to say A afterwards? A? No. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes. Just, Actually, in Alberta, it's more hay than A. And uh, I, came, I came from Toronto where it was A, and then I moved here, and, it, and I, I think I've converted now to hay. But it well, sounded there. weird when I first moved here. So if it comes out, I'll know where it comes from then. <laughs> yeah. And apparently I do say a boot still. Well. Some habits are hard to break, that's for sure. And I, I don't think I have an accent, but I'm told I sound very like I'm from Rochester, so I understand. Okay. You sound normal to me. Okay, well, normal. You're, the first, you're the first person to call me normal in a long time. <laughs> so, show me your mug. Oh, you my mug. Okay. This is, is my mug. And for nice scale, it actually is almost as big as my head. <laughs> is there a story behind your mug? Um, there's a few things with it. My husband bought it for me because A, it's purple, and B, it's gigantic because when I sit down with the tea, I sometimes will drink it really fast, and I don't want to have to get up again and make a new one. So mm -hmm. now I have like three cups worth in here, and I really don't <laughs> like when I go to places and they give you those dinky little teacups. Like, what am I supposed to do with this? That's a sip. <laughs> Two sips and it's gone. May I have some more, please? <laughs> yes. So this way, and then another good thing because... Mugs, mugs are important. You can't just get any mug, right? So True. this mug has a nice handle, lots of room for your hand, yes. and I have it filled up to here, and it's perfectly balanced, easy to hold. I'm not struggling. These are important things to me. <laughs> they really are, especially if you're going to hold it a lot, right? For sure. So what's in your cup? You said tea, but what kind of tea? Yeah, so today I have a... Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing this somewhat right because it's not English. Um, it's called Jen Mai Cha. So cha being tea. And then I don't actually know what the other part of it means per se, but it's a green tea that has rice in it. Oh, very good. And you enjoy it. I love it. It's one of my favorites. Uh, it's got a very distinct smell and my husband does not like it. <laughs> so it's an office tea. Is that what I just heard? <laughs> He's my intern anyways, so he has to deal with it. <laughs> well, I'm going to share my mug with you. So this is the mug that I got this past weekend Aww. for speaking at WordCamp Hamilton. Awesome. So it's got, got laser eye wapoo. Like there's actually a, like a thing oh, where, neat. not on this mug obviously, but like there's an animated GIF where yes. GIF, I don't know, I'm not going to get involved in that kind of where his eyes kind of glow and that kind of thing. I'm not sure exactly what he does. He's some kind of cyber buddy, but this is my WordCamp yeah. Hamilton Mom, I'm also huge on Wapu. Love Wapu. Oh, I love Wapu too. And it was Canadian, just like you. I went to I Hamilton, know. Ontario. Yes. So I almost went to university there. Oh, very good. There's a lot of universities there, I noticed. Yeah. And I'm drinking water because I have three podcasts tonight. And if I put coffee in my cup for each one of them, I would be awake still tomorrow morning. So yeah. I'm going with the water tonight. Um, but usually I drink a nice breakfast blend with some cream and sugar. So yeah. just so you know. I have all kinds. I have... I probably have at least 100 teas that I could choose from at home. Wow, that's a lot but of tea. I have like, you know, my vein ones and yeah. Mornings, well, you, mornings are for like a black tea with sugar and milk and, and then we can get creative after. Well, whatever the one is with the rice, you know, bring a little of that to work in the U.S. because I want to try I it. Oh, yeah. Yes. Very good. Cool. 
All right. Well, so I asked you to tell me a little bit about what you do. Now mm -hmm. tell me um, how you got started with WordPress. I, I love hearing everybody's WordPress stories because we all end up in the same place, more or less, right, with WordPress. Yeah. We all get here a different way. So how did you end yeah. up a I was trying to think, how far back in the story do I go? So um, I started a Reiki business, actually. I quit my corporate job and started a Reiki business. Wait, and are you a Reiki master? Yeah, I I'm am. A level two. I'm a level two. Are you? Awesome. Yeah. So maybe you can give so, me a tuning a, a yeah. tune at camp, too. Okay, so you were it's a Reiki? Well, but I probably could. So. so you're a Reiki master and you started a Reiki business. I interrupted yeah. you. Keep going. And then... Um, and then I just found it wasn't the right business for me, but I was meeting people in the business who needed computer help and I was good at that. And so I started, I thought, I'll just do this as an extra little thing. We'll see if it goes anywhere. And so I thought, well, I guess I should make a website for it. So I thought I'm going to try to make my own website and I'd heard about WordPress. So I went in and I made a, a site on wordpress.com and one thing led to another and people started asking for websites and then I moved to self hosted and just kept building and building and learning and learning. And, and here I am as if I've been doing it forever. That's exciting. That was back in about 2010. Oh, so it's been quite a while that you've been working on it then. So yeah, but it all started with Reiki. <laughs> Isn't that great? So do you feel like you put that energy that is that Reiki energy into all of your sites and everything that you do? Yeah, I try to. And I think it also comes through um, in attracting the right kind of client for me. And right now, in the last few years, a lot of my clients have been holistic or natural based or in some shape or form trying to do good in the world, which mm -hmm. is kind of that energy that I like to put out. So, so yeah, both in, in, this, in the work that I do, but also with the people that I work with. That's wonderful. Yeah. It's it's so good when you can have a synergy, not only with the client per se, but also with their project and their, their organization, their, their business. So it yeah. just it does feel good. It feels like you're in the right place at the right time and all of that good stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. exciting. Fantastic. And is that how you kind of got into organizing and, um, well, tell us that. So obviously yeah. the right place, right time probably fit into that too. So with organizing your meetups and organizing your word camps, tell a little bit about that. Yeah. So Gosh, I think it was back in 2012 then. Um, I was on meetup.com looking around and saw that we had a local meetup group. And um, I'm pretty shy until I know people. So I never went out to one. But then one day they posted that Edmonton, which is north of us, was having a work camp. So all by myself, I decided to go because I really like the idea of having some sort of conference to go to that... Mm -hmm is related to what I do. So I went all by myself and I was really shy and introverted that weekend, but at least I went, I didn't really talk to many people. And that was my first WordCamp experience. And it was so amazing. Most things were like right over my head, <laughs> but I did learn some things. And then the next year when I went, I understood more, but I still learned. And then the next year I went back and I was like, Hey, I know these things that they're talking about. I'm already doing these things. So that's where I've got a lot of my learning is between meetups and, and word camps. And so then just in being involved, I think once I came back from that one word camp, I did start going to meetups and then just got involved in at our local camps that started in 2013. Um, I offered to volunteer and then I like to go on the registration desk because then for a shy introvert like me, I get to just sit there and you come talk to me instead of me talking to you. It's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. Brilliant. And uh, so, yeah, I started off volunteering and then one year there was a call for org organizers and some people that I had met in the community had said, you know, why don't you join? So then I did. And then the next year there was nobody left that was going to lead for our camp. So it would have died. I'm like, well, that can't happen. So then I stepped up to be the lead organizer and yeah. Just, and the rest and then, is history. Yeah. And, and then with the meetups, uh, I was sort of helping the guy that was running them and then he had to step out for a little while. So then I took over and yeah, here I am. <laughs> now, did I read um, in your bio too, that you do some stuff with kids camps? Yeah, so I have, um, a few years ago, an organization started up an Hour of Code. Um, 
started in the States, right? And but became worldwide really fast. And I was I was in physiotherapy at the time and they had the TVs on and there was a commercial came on for it. I was like, oh that's really cool. And I my son was six at the time, I think. And so I went home and I looked it up and thought that's really cool. And so I approached the school, but they didn't really get back to me. So I ended up doing the hour of code using Scratch with my son and his friend that year. Mm-hmm. So that was, he was in grade one, then in grade, or no, that was grade two. Then in grade three, I knew his teacher from a previous job we had worked at before, before he actually had become a teacher. And so I approached him and said, hey, would love to do this with your class, if not all the grade threes or the whole school. So we did all the grade threes and they loved it so much that the next year I went back and did all uh, grade one to grade four. It was about 400 kids, I think. And it was so, I just, I love working with the kids because they're so energetic and enthusiastic. They haven't learned yet that they aren't, like all of those biases, you know, they're not in their heads yet. So, and they're all capable. Some of them pick it up really fast. Some of them need a bit more time, but at the end, they've all been able to do what we set out to do. And I think in grade three, we did Flappy Bird and they just like, they all had their Flappy Bird games at the end of it and they loved it. So I got into sort of working with kids and scratch and I started creating, um, I created sort of a division of my company called Kids Code Force and I started teaching at local community centers here and same thing they all loved it so I was like okay we need to bring this we need to bring something to WordCamp that has the kids and then I found out that some places were doing it already and so yeah so last year we we were able to bring Kids Camp to WordCamp for the first time in Calgary and I think we had about eight kids show up. That's really good. Yeah, we were really happy because, I mean, our word camps are only about 130 people right now total. So eight's a pretty decent amount. Yeah. And, and they loved it. So we got really good feedback. Um, full disclosure, half the kids were organizers' kids. <laughs> but, you know, that's how you get started. But this year... I, my kid doesn't ever want to do what I want to do. So it doesn't matter if they were organizers' kids. <laughs> Mine comes, but he doesn't want to do the learning. He wants to be the teacher's assistant. Oh, so, <laughs> so then this year we had 14 kids show up wow. and, um, and only three of the kids were organizers kids. So a lot of them Making were new. I don't even know, yeah. I don't know where they came from. Um, but we're definitely growing. So next year we're looking at, cause we had lots of kids at the end saying we want to come back again. And, and, uh, so we're looking at having two tracks next year, anticipating that we'll have even more kids That's and amazing. having some returning ones. So we'll offer something because basically our word, our kids camps have been focused on having them create, set up and start populating their own personal blog. So That's great. Yeah. So tell me on the WordCamp US team, mm-hmm. which, um, which, what are we called? Teams? The different. Yeah. Yep. So we have well, like eight or nine different teams that we're all on. Which one yeah. are you on? I am co-leading the Contributor Day team. Ooh, exciting. And for those who don't know what Contributor Day is, what is that? Uh, so Contributor Day is an opportunity for anybody and everybody to give back to the WordPress project, no matter what your experience level, no matter what skills you have. Um, and, and to that very point, here I am being a co-lead of this team, and I've only attended one Contributor Day, and that was the one at WordCamp US last year. I had no idea what it was going to be like, and I just successfully organized a local contributor, standalone Contributor Day in Calgary last weekend. Exciting. So, I have a secret for you. Last uh, Contributor Day at last WordCamp US was my first one, and I had no idea what I was doing either, so... Yeah. And here we are both, you know, organizers of US now. So yeah. and I promise I will much, be at yours. <laughs> awesome. Pretty much nobody at our local one knew what it was about either or what to expect. And we did have at least one person who has not even touched WordPress yet, who doesn't know coding, um, and came and was able to do some things. And she felt so, she was so proud of herself at the end of it. And so excited. And we had such, we had, I think about a dozen people show up. And same, same as kids camp. They were all saying, when can we do this again? Isn't <laughs> so, that exciting? 
Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh, I just love hearing it. Um, you're one of those people that I always say I drank the WordPress Kool-Aid. I think that you probably drank from the same picture I did. I think so. I started calling myself a WordPress fangirl. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to have to adopt that as well. May I yes. call myself that as well? Yep. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's yes, awesome. It's definitely so, WordPress Kool-Aid I have had. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what's going on as far as like, what, what does it look like as far as the WordCamp uh, U.S. Contributor Day this year. Are you starting yeah. planning already? Is that something that kind of ramps up a little bit more as we get toward that point? Yeah, it, it ramps up mostly towards the end, but um, this year we're trying to make a, a really big effort in educating people more ahead of time what it is and mm -hmm. letting people know that they really can participate without needing to have certain skill sets. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to be putting out some blogs about, so there's 18 different teams within Contributor Day from the Make WordPress. That's amazing, um, isn't it, that there's that many? Yeah. And so, I mean, some of them are things you'd expect like core and design. And then there's things that, uh, full disclosure, I still don't fully know what they do, like Tide. Like Tide? <laughs> I know Tide. I don't know down there, but up here I joke, I'm like, that's laundry detergent. I know. I said, I'm not going to go on the team that I have no idea. Put me on the marketing team. I know what that means. <laughs> yeah. But then there's, you know, like if you, it's fun to say up here, if you speak any language other than English, you can join, like you can help translate and be on the polyglot right. team, but it's extra fun up here because English, Canadian English is a separate language from U.S. English. <laughs> so I could literally translate. <laughs> from English to English. <laughs> I love it. And, and That's for great. Fun, if you, you know, if you really want to get into some fun stuff, there's pirate English as well that you can translate into. Um, talk yeah. like a pirate day that there is an actual talk like a pirate day every year so yeah. you never know that might come in handy yeah. um, one of the things that I think I one of the reasons I'd never gone to contributor day before was even as somebody who had designed 300 websites I still thought like I know how to just like use themes and use plugins and everything there's no value in me going because I would just sit there and watch and there's nothing that I could do and that's couldn't be further from the truth isn't that right absolutely not I mean there's also, I mean, something like the community team. Well, we're all part of the WordPress community. If, if you're at WordCamp, you're, up, you're part of the WordPress community. So mm -hmm. you're already kind of on their team. And the things that they need done are things that typically anybody can do. That's the team I participated in last year. And I helped organize a Trello board for That's a exciting. workflow, which, you know, has nothing like... Not that it has nothing to do with WordPress, but it's not your typical what you would think of for contributing, right? And some at our local one, um, we had as a group, we talked about some courses that the training team could work on and we put together a whole document for them and everybody that showed up was part of that conversation. Um, and then some like that one lady I said that didn't know anything, she helped out on the docs team in the morning and was literally um, copy because they're moving all the documentation from one place to another and so she helped with setting up redirects copying and pasting the new URL into somewhere for the old URL so that it would redirect yeah. and you know it was copy paste and type in a couple of numbers which anybody could do right, right. So even if it's what, a you're not sure of there's and even core in and that they need people's opinions anybody like people who aren't experts so there's something for, for sure. everybody one of the other misnomers that I had was that if I show up at contributor day I'm signed into something and I'm locked into helping forever or for a year or that there's some kind of right. expectation and that's yeah. not that's not true either is it no it's just for the day and even within the day um, you know if you because you're, you're asked on your sign up form for your ticket what team you want to be on and that's more just to give us an idea of how many people we're going to have in different areas if there's something that we need to sort of load up more on and even within the day when you get there you go sit down at a table but then all the team leads get up and talk about the things that they'll usually have tasks they want to accomplish that particular day and so then if you decide oh that team over there actually sounds more interesting to me you can get up and walk over and sit down there nobody's going to be offended 
And if after lunch you decide, okay, now I want to go over there, that's great too, right? It's, yeah. it's, an, it's an opportunity to meet new people and help, but it's, we recognize we're all volunteers. Nobody's sitting there forcing you to do anything that you don't want to do. The only word of caution I would ever give somebody is you might fall more in love with WordPress and you might fall more in love with the community and you yeah. might end up volunteering a little bit more. I, it was the first time I'd ever contributed on Contributor Day and I am very active now on the marketing channel and I've been mm. um, doing a lot of things with marketing. So, And I think yeah. that's part of how I ended up on the organizing team was yeah. that uh, my marketing skills came into play. So They know how to um, find you. <laughs> they do. <laughs> I, I don't hide well either, so... <laughs> Um, when you think back on some of the things that you've done as far as, uh, first of all, let me ask you, have you ever spoken at a word camp or not yet? This, we, so we just had our word camp earlier yeah. in May and it was my, I say it was my first time speaking. Some people may say otherwise because I led the kids camp and okay. technically that counts as speaking. Um, but, but to I, an introvert, it was talking in front of the grown-ups. That was a little scary. Yeah, right? And it wasn't recorded for anything. Right. Okay. But so this one, I was first thing on the first day, the first in the big theater, like our biggest of the three rooms. And I did a talk called Beyond the Five Minute Install, which is Ooh. actually a, a workshop that we ended up pitching to the training team as part of our... <laughs> Oh, great. It's part of our community, our contributor day. Um, so yeah, so that was really great. It was, it was about, you know, there's lots of places to go and find out how to use WordPress once you, um, sorry, <laughs> I don't know. Where you knock is. over your tea. Oh, <laughs> no, I think a dog moved the curtains. <laughs> That's okay. We like dogs too. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so there's lots of places to find out, you know, how do I create a post, like all the technical parts of working on WordPress, but there's not a lot of opportunities to learn all the things people wish they knew down the road, like, and things that they find out too late, like hosting and domains and, and then right. and secure and lots of those kinds of things. So I talked so about Was it fun? It was really great. Um, I had a huge laugh to myself because... I'm, I'm a procrastinator. So of course I went out, you know, I was still trying to do my presentation the day before and then we had the speaker dinner. So then I went to that and then I came home and I finished my presentation and then I meant to print out my notes and I forgot. So I did that first thing in the morning before getting up to go in and help set up and I didn't look at them. I just printed it off and I thought, oh, I can fit two screens to a page because I hate wasting paper. So off I go. I don't look at them. I get into the to the theater and I start going through. I'm like, oh, I should use my notes. And I flipped. And when I got to the first page that had notes, the text was like two millimeters big. <laughs> and, oh, no. lit, and I just kind of I don't know if this is exactly what I did, but from what I remember, I just kind of went, well, that's not going to work. And I kind of tossed them over my shoulder. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, so that was my first <laughs> speaking. And then at the end of that same day, we had a women in WordPress panel. Yeah. And I was on that as well. So that was really neat too. So I've had quite a few interesting different kinds of speaking experiences now. That's at wonderful. So, yeah. so being a procrastinator waiting till the day before, I'll tell you that I did my slides Saturday morning for my Saturday afternoon awesome. uh, presentation this last weekend. And I sat down in the green room, right? Where we're kind of yeah. like, you can go to prep and whatever. And I heard somebody say, if you're, if you, if you're not doing your slides the day before or the day of, are you even a WordPress presenter? It's kind of <laughs> so, true, right? Which is... <laughs> Which is hard because as organizers, yeah. you're supposed to get the slides two weeks before yeah. so that we can review. <laughs> but none of us are ever. It actually. doesn't happen now. No. <laughs> it doesn't happen. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a nice idea. <laughs> yeah. So thinking back over the camps that you've attended, um, are there any particular talks or any particular speakers that come to mind that like that made a difference to me or I really loved listening to so-and-so or that topic will like really change the way that I look at things. Yeah. Um, I had to think about this because I haven't listened to a whole lot in the last few years because I've been focused on the organizing and not sure. so much attending, but, um, at WordCamp US and I don't know if I'm saying his last name right, but Chris Coyier, um, he did one on how to think like a front end developer and, Ooh. 
it's one of those topics, just the idea of being a front end developer is one of those topics and ideas that make me nervous saying I am a front end developer because I'm self taught and people know so much more than me, you know, an imposter syndrome, blah, blah, blah. So having him talk about what is a front end developer at its core and and I was like, okay, cool. I feel better about this. I do know I am a front end developer. And so I felt that helped me feel a little bit better. And the validation. Uh, yeah, right. Um, so that was really good. And then just in thinking back over the years at some of our local both meetups and word camps, we've got a gentleman, Paul Thompson, who is really knowledgeable on SEO. And so some of the the key things that I remember about SEO are things that, that he's talked about in his various presentations. So I think I heard him this past weekend in Hamilton. Actually. Yes, you probably did. He was, yes. he's moved now from Calgary to near Ottawa. And yes, yeah. I do recall him saying he was speaking. In yeah. Hamilton. He's, he's very knowledgeable, very, uh, very personable. What a nice guy. Yes. Yeah, yes. that's great. And I found that I i don't think I've ever run into a speaker at a WordCamp that I would describe as snob or off-putting or any of those languages. I think everybody's so approachable. Um, and I think one of the people, one of the things that a lot of people don't know is that speakers are not paid to be there. Yes. You know, that nobody's paying our hotel bills. Nobody's paying our travel bills. We're not getting any kind of a stipend. We get yeah. dinner the night beforehand, usually. Yeah. And we get exactly the same as everybody else besides. Um, occasionally, there's a speaker gift, if right. the budget allows for it. But that's not even guaranteed. And, and it's well, not expected, quite honestly. Um, no. You we know, do it because we love what we do in, in the community yeah. and, and want to give back, right? Exactly. Exactly. That pay it forward, pay it back. Um, attitude that I see so much in the WordPress community is such a wonderful yes, thing. Exactly. Is there anything I haven't asked you that you think, oh, I just want to talk about such and such, or I want to tell her this. I, I know, know I put you, I didn't put that in the notes, so you I didn't know. know I was going to ask that. It's okay if there's not. I just want to make sure I cover everything that you might want to talk about. I don't think so. I'm just looking at because I made notes too. Uh huh. Questions. But well, if not, I'm going to go into our rapid fire questions. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. So what are two or three of your must have plugins? You could, I mean, four is fine too. Like, but what are some of your <laughs> must have plugins paid or otherwise? So I'm a, I'm, I'm one of those, uh, it depends kinds of people. <laughs> like I am people. too. Um, but for the most part, not necessarily a specific one, but security and backups are a must if you don't have that taken care of with your hosting, but not on the same server as your hosting. And even then, still, you should have your own backups happening mm -hmm. yeah. and access them aside from anywhere else. So it's not so much, you know, I like, I've used a bunch of them and they've all been fabulous, just as long as you have something that right. is your that. It's a must. Yeah. Um, and then I'm not really sure, but you know, if you're doing e-commerce, then WooCommerce is my go-to. If we're doing courses, I like uh, Lifter LMS. And then what do you use for forms? We have a battle of the forms here in Rochester <laughs> where people are really, really committed to their forms. I'm not super committed. Um, okay. I have mostly used contact form seven, mm -hmm. but I'm, kind of having some issues with it lately and moving away from it I'm starting to like WP forms light mm -hmm. I know gravity forms and ninja forms are two that people go crazy for um, my clients tend to be solopreneurs not big budgets so I try to keep things away from paid plugins if we don't mm -hmm. need to and ninja forms is usually just way more than than what my clients yeah. need so yeah, there you go. WP Forms Lite is kind of my new go-to forms one. Awesome. I'll have to look into that. I've never looked at that one. So, yeah. Um, what is one of the biggest WordPress mistakes you've ever made, and how did you learn from it? Not having backups. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a story there. <laughs> Back in the day, right when I was because I was all self-taught, and so you don't know what you don't know, and um, so I didn't have. I hadn't implemented any auto backup system at all for clients. And one day, a couple years later, one of my clients messaged and they'd been hacked. 
and uh, to a point where, yeah, there was there was nothing to start from. Oh to, wow! And so they ended up rebuilding from scratch, which uh, I'm trying to remember now if there was a reason why we didn't even just go with um, like getting the the hack cleaned up rather than I'm, I'm not sure it was probably a client decision, but I felt really bad when they reached out to me saying that they had been hacked, that I didn't have any kind of backup for them because I hadn't saved anything myself and I hadn't sure. set them up with any kind of backups. So that's one of the, yeah, I mean, it worked out in the end, but yeah, that's one of those hard lessons. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, I, <laughs> I understand. I, I'm just glad I get to ask the questions because I don't want to have to tell you what my big ones are either. So <laughs> oh, I can ask questions. So what's oh, yours? I did say you. Well, <laughs> my my biggest WordPress mistake was putting um, lots of clients on the same shared hosting uh, because when one of them got hacked, guess what happened? Oh no! So that's they like all my got hacked. Biggest- <laughs> Yes. And I, and a lot of them were updating their own sites as far as um, blog posts and things like that. So I couldn't even go by my like stored backup. So I actually had to go through and clean up uh, thousands of files. Um, It it was, it was a nightmare. I'll tell you all about it over drinks and WordCamp US. (laughs) (laughs) What's your proudest WordPress moment? Let's move from the negative. What's your proudest WordPress moment? So again, so many, um, but I think what I've settled on is um, getting the kids camp up and running yeah. in Calgary. That's one of the best things. And and then not just getting it set up, but watching, seeing, you know, even though it's only been the second year, but I have a really good feeling that it's going to continue to grow. Like seeing the growth from this year, from last year to this year was just a huge moment of, of pride for me because it's pretty much, I'm, I'm the one doing it. You know, I've got support yeah. from the rest of the organizers, but I am the kids camp person. And so, um, it's kind of all me. That's really <laughs> exciting. Help. I can imagine watching all those kids be excited about making flappy birds was pretty cool too. Oh yeah, definitely. That's so fun. Just having them show off their work too, right? Like yeah. at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we do show and tell. And so having them get up, and listening to them presenting their own sites and showing off what they did. And they're just, I love kids when I they're know, learning. <laughs> yeah. When they're chaotic running everywhere, it's like, did yeah. you come with a volume? I need to turn down the volume. <laughs> yeah. If you weren't working in web, what career might you want to attempt? I think I would want to do something with kids and learning. Um, maybe even working with kids who have some disabilities like autism let me rephrase that not necessarily rephrase that I want to take away take back the word disabilities sure (laughs) because it's not a disability but that's how it gets referred to all the time Mm -hmm. but kids who think differently and don't fit the system so much I Mm -hmm. like working with them and because again with this whole watching kids learning how to do these things and seeing that anybody and everybody can and so working with kids who struggle and who lots of society still sees as less than capable and less than um to be able to help them shine in the areas where they can shine because they all have their strengths and sometimes their strengths are way bigger than anybody else's strengths right so i like watching and helping with that that's beautiful. I love that. Um, what's something on your bucket list? My bucket list would be to travel to the UK. I've always, so my heritage is English, Irish, Scottish. With that white <laughs> skin, I never would have known. I know, right? I'm as white as it gets. <laughs> Somehow we landed in Montreal in French Canada. <laughs> and you're glowing. <laughs> But I've never been there and I love watching Brit TV and Mm -hmm. I just, I would love to go, you know, my parents talked about taking us there when I was about 16, I think, and it didn't happen. And ever since then, it's just, it's what I want to do. I have a a feeling you'll get there. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to get there. I know you're going to get there. Probably via WordCamp. (laughs) Probably. WordCamp London every year. I mean, there's an opportunity right there. 
I know I want to go there too someday. Maybe we'll make travel plans together and we will be roommates or something. There you go. You never know. You never know. And one other smaller thing that I want to do is, um, what is it? Uh, you know, when you can see it in your head and you can't find the word all of a sudden, dog sledding. All the time. (laughs) Oh, really? You just want to yell mush, mush. (laughs) Oh, that's great. Do dog sledding, see the dog sleds and yeah, I think that would be pretty cool. I love that. It reminded me of that, um, that, that phrase that says, if you're not the lead dog, the scenery never changes. Yeah. <laughs> be the lead dog, be the lead dog. Um, tell us or show us a hidden talent that you have. I was going to show you and I forgot to bring it down. <laughs> what is it? Tell um, us about it then. Coloring. It's my self-care practice that I do. Wonderful most days but not always and so I've really gotten into it lately and I like to think that um that I am half decent at it (laughs) there are some people who do some crazy amazing things with coloring because now I'm on Facebook coloring groups too but I like coloring mandalas a lot and and I've got I've got pencil crayons and I got good pencil crayons now and I've got markers that I like and all these different things. And so, yeah, coloring. That's great. You'll have to send me some pictures later then. Yeah. Show me. I, I would love to see them. I would love to yeah. see them. Um, I was going to, oh, I was going to say, so tell us how we can find you. So where's your website? What's your social media? How can people find you if they want to find out more about you, what you do? All right. So first I'm going to spell the word amethyst <laughs> because nobody knows how to spell it. it was going back to the whole rate, people are like, why did you name your company Amethyst Answers? But it goes back to the Reiki thing because that was Amethyst Circle and I was trying to keep it together and the purple, gotcha. but nobody can spell it. So it's like the worst business name ever. So Amethyst is A-M-E-T-H-Y-S-T. So my website is amethystanswers.com. On Twitter and Instagram, I am Amethyst Answers. And on LinkedIn, it's just Christina Workman, and I should show up. I think I might be, yeah, I think I'm the only Christina Workman. Like I have, like with my link. Mm -hmm. Um, Email Christina at amethystancers.com <laughs> perfect and that's christina with a ch correct yes christina with a ch and work man nice make it work man, man. <laughs> um yeah and i think i think if you email anything at amethyst answers it comes through but you can also email me at hello at christina workman.ca yeah see I think. you think <laughs> remember it's one of those i bought it and i keep meaning to use it and then don't I used to collect like little glass figurines and all this like now I just collect URLs <laughs> yes I know some other people who are like that <laughs> it's one of the dangers of the profession I believe <laughs> and I'm always going to do something with it someday yeah so. I am not a collector of URLs. I try to slim them down. I just dropped Thank one you. the other day, actually, because I had, again, an issue, not an issue, but being in Canada, there's always the debate, do you go .com, do you go .ca, right. if they're both available, but then you're paying for two, and it's nice to have the .ca, but does anybody really care? Some people do. It depends on what you're doing. Sure. But if you're going global, then .com's better. But so yeah. yeah, so I dropped a .ca for something that I decided was not necessary anymore. I'm very proud of you. Yeah. I just want to point out one more thing. Um, mm-hmm. I ha- my hair matches your. Um, yes. <laughs> I do have purple hair. It's very light, but I have purple hair, That's so awesome. I I could join the Amethyst Answers uh, fan club because I yeah. have purple hair. Do you want to know something? I have never dyed my hair, ever. Wow. I think I've had like mascara coloring in it once. Yeah. Mine would be completely gray if I didn't (laughs) color it something. So I'm getting, I'm happy to say I'm getting white, not gray. And I can't find any right now. Sometimes it's right on my face. I call it my sparkle. Oh, I like that. I've heard wisdom highlights, but sparkle sounds so much better. I know, right? I love it. I love it. Yes. Like and the I'm, inside of an amethyst. Yes. And I'm good at finding silver linings on cloud. So it's also my silver lining. But Perfect. 
Yeah. Well, I love your positive attitude. I love your amazing outlook. I can't wait to meet you in person. There's a big hug coming for you at WordCamp US. I know um, some people are introverted or whatever. I'm still going to hug you anyway, so get used to it. Um, I'm not an instigator of hugs, but I gladly accept hugs. And I don't, I don't really over, I will never force a hug on anybody. So in case anybody's worried, they're going to run into me at camp and be like, stay away. <laughs> but no, I'll okay, jump in um, and block them for you. There you go. But I do look forward to um, sitting down and actually yeah. seeing you face to face without so many miles between us. Yeah, I know. Exactly. This is the one and then, yeah. <laughs> exactly. This is fantastic. Thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. And, um, Oh yeah, it's been wonderful. So, um, so people can find you online and we're going to put all of your contact information also in the show footer here. So people will be able to reach out and find you if they have questions. Great. Um, but it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks, Michelle. Yeah.